I don't know what's been going on, but we've had so much weird weather in this world. And just, you know, we've had even just in the States here, we've had hurricanes, tropical storms, fires. I mean, it's just like on and on and on. But stuff's going all over the place, Dan. How's the weather where you are? Uh, pretty, actually really kind of unseasonably warm, and I feel like that's going to be the case for years to come, but it's it's been going up and down, but, you know, going with Celsius, of course, in the high 20s for this period of September is, is very warm for us here in Alberta. Well, you know, uh, we had Katie Nicolau on our previous episode about Lower Decks, and welcome everyone to Positively Trek. I'm Bruce with Dan, and, you know... She was really great to talk to about that last Lower Decks episode. I wish we would have kept her around to let us know about what she thinks about the weather. So, oh, wait a second. Wait, Katie. Surprise! That's you. You're still you around. You didn't kick me out of the room, so I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on? Well, you know, the weather, of course, crazy, always happening, but a lot more frequently nowadays. So, basically, a little sleep and a little bit of Star Trek sprinkled on top of it. Nice. Well, knowing the weather geek that you are and also a Star Trek geek, is there a favorite Star Trek weather episode that you have? Oh, I absolutely do. What is it? The let he who is without sin when they go to Ryza and they manipulate the weather grid. Mm. Oh, my gosh. That episode, when, it, when I was watching through it the first time, I thought, you know what? This, this could be interesting. How can you manipulate the weather for your own purposes and blah, 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 blah. And I could totally be an evil weather scientist <laughs> if I were in the future. I could totally see that happening. It occurs to me that like in the future with all the, the weather modification technology and stuff, there's probably not a lot of weather people because like it would just all be automated. But I bet during that episode, there was like some retired weather person who's like, this is my time to shine and like came out of retirement <laughs> and was trying exactly, to figure out what's just... going on. <laughs> <laughs> runs right into the room like this is where i'm supposed to be <laughs> but along with that i also thought you know if we can manipulate the weather there's probably some field in kansas that has a constant ef5 tornado just sitting there just for people to go by and see it's like the tornado that, museum yeah <laughs> exactly. it made me so happy to think that could be in the future where you don't even have to chase tornadoes you could just make one i love it <laughs> uh, that scares me katie because i know you'd be making tornadoes all the time <laughs> I would, it would be like, like Halloween decorations or like holiday decorations. First, you have a tornado in your front yard. The next day, you know, let's have a blizzard and you could totally just manipulate it. My house would just be chaos. <laughs> My neighbors would hate me. I just, you know, there she goes again with a tropical storm. I just got the image of like, you know, you in the future spamming the like disaster buttons in a SimCity version, except it's like yes. the real world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd buy myself a little ghost town in the middle of nowhere and I'd just be playing around with the weather like, ooh, let's do this. Blizzard, followed by hail, the size of minivans. <laughs> what, as a meteorologist, what are your thoughts about controlling the weather? Because in the future, in the Star Trek type future, there is this idea that we could control weather, that here on Earth, if you know we have a hurricane coming in, we could stop it or move it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I know in modern day, we're starting to like see what cloud seeding can do and trying to see if we can manipulate it at all. But as far as total weather control, oh, I would love to see that be able to happen because you could save so many lives. You could help with creating agriculture. There's so many applications that people don't realize the weather affects. And if we could control that, life would be so much better for so many people. And I really hope that can happen. But for now, I think we're stuck with just trying to get it to rain. Which It's so unnatural to control the weather that I would think if humans are controlling what's happening with weather on the planet, that it could actually end up in disaster because it's not natural. Oh, yeah. Well, it's either they're going to do really well, put in a lot of time and research, not going to, <laughs> and then actually make sure it works well. Or it's going to be a rush job and people are going to try and weaponize it and be like, okay, well, we're going to cause them to have an entire drought over their country. And then you're just going to totally screw with the atmosphere. And at that point, I'm going to be on Mars. So have fun with that, Earth. <laughs> You'll be working on starships on Mars. That's, that's just wonderful. Exactly. Utopia <laughs> Planitia. <laughs> Perfect. Well, there's a couple things we want to talk on today's episode. Uh, one is a movie update. We seem to get several of those, even though there isn't a whole lot of updates, but there's still news flying around about movies. But also, uh, CBS All Access, we do know the new name of CBS All Access. We'll touch on that. And then uh, 
there's an update on New York Comic Con. So let's talk about the movies. You know, I'm not even sure. There's times I'm like, do we even need to go here? Because there doesn't seem to be any definite answers on any things and what we're getting with Star Trek movies. You know, when we get Viacom CBS merging together, this seems to promote this idea that, hey, you know, maybe we're going to get movies a lot faster because it'd be more integrated with what the TV side's doing with stuff. And, and maybe this is a good sign. But if anything, it just seems things have halted to a stop because we got director Noah Hawley that has been signed up to direct a movie. But now we're told that, yeah, definitely Emma Watts, who's on board with uh, Viacom CBS, has said, yeah, this is on hold and has said that directly to him. Katie, I don't even know. What did you think of the last few movies? Were you a fan of those? I, at the time when they came out, I thought it was the coolest thing because I was with the 09 Abrams first movies. That's right when I started watching Star Trek. And I thought, oh, this is great. It's modern. It's flashy. It's going to get more people into it. And then I go back and I watch movies like Into Darkness and I just think, kill me <laughs> and the plot. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think they did really well with Beyond and I think it was a step in the right direction. But I don't know. It seems like it's always just kind of been a side project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dan, do you think we even need movies at this point? I don't know. You know, there's such an expansion of Star Trek in the television universe that like, you know, movies have always, I mean, there's some great classic Star Trek movies, of course, and really great moments from them. But for me, like movies aren't the best medium to tell a Star Trek story. I feel like delving into these characters and, exploring them in a television show is really where it's at. Would I like to see another film? Absolutely. Like I think, I think there's a definitely a room for Star Trek in the movie universe, but you know, it's, it's definitely secondary to the television show for me. I do have to say, I I was surprised to see this topic in the notes because I know how kind of annoyed you've become with the whole back and forth with the films and stuff. (laughs) So um, yeah, this whole Noah Hawley thing Definitely interesting news. And and it seems like you could sum up all of the news reports on all of this from the last two years to be basically like nothing's happening yet, (laughs) but it's, it's really too bad. You know, this kind of, um, back and forth on this with nothing really happening. It's got to be frustrating. Like it's frustrating enough for us as fans to see this going on. I can't imagine being Noah Hawley or any of these creatives who are trying to work on this stuff and just, you know, never it's, it's like that, that goal on the horizon that you just never seem to be able to get closer to. And the reason I included this in today's show is because he was recently interviewed by variety Uh, And most of the interview is about what he's doing on his Fargo series, but he does talk a little bit about Star Trek. So this is actually coming from him and he confirms that, yes, he was told the project's on hold, but he also confirmed that a script was finished. So the script is there. It's done. And they also started hiring designers. Mm -hmm. So we were already further along than what I thought. I thought they just hired him and it was just like waiting to hear if he should move forward or not, but he was already starting to move forward with this. I had no clue that they had the script done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, that opens up. So that, that makes it seem like they're so close. They're right on the edge to committing to the project and actually putting it into action. But so far away still as well. Yeah. And one of the big things that has come out of this news that I've seen elsewhere too is uh, the plot for this movie. And one of the reasons ostensibly they're saying that they've put it on hold was the plot involved a uh, galactic pandemic that. uh, Oh, no. Yeah. And and I mean, I, I can't honestly think that that is the main reason that it's on hold, but it's also a very good reason to have in the column for reasons why like let's just put this on hold right now this is kind of maybe not what movie audiences are going to pay to see right now uh yeah. maybe in a couple years but yeah Ugh. It, when i read that i was i was kind of like oh, okay wow well at this point i think it would be a couple years before we see a film because with covid they're not going to be able to film anything probably for a while and by the time they do film it and edit it and i mean we probably are a couple years away so i I mean, not based on the subject matter, but no matter what the script would be at this point, 
I still think we're a couple years away from getting a film in the theaters. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. To your point, Dan, I don't even know. I mean, I would love to see a movie again and see in the theaters, but I'm so satisfied with what we're getting on CBS all access. And they're very theatrical in a lot of senses that I, it's, I don't want something just to have something. I want it to be good. I want there to be a good reason for it. But what intrigues me about this is he also confirmed that this would deal with a new set of characters. It's a whole new crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really fascinating. So are you guys open to that? You like that idea? I love that idea. And also the prospect that, you know, if they do an open casting call, I would sign up. <laughs> oh, it's for personal reasons here, I see. Oh, you know it is. <laughs> no, I would just, I would love to see a bunch of new characters, just like what we're getting with the new shows. Like, P- sure, Picard is near and dear to my heart, but you get Discovery, you get Lower Decks, you get all these new, exciting characters that you can relate to in totally different ways from the past few, like, TV series. So I I love to see expansion of characters and of course more cosplay opportunities. So yeah, always the, new in Star Trek opens up so many doors. Absolutely, and and to me, like Star Trek isn't Kirk. Star Trek isn't Picard. It's not these narrow definitions. Star Trek is a setting. It's a universe that you know I. I'm all for like, let's play in this universe. Let's look at things from perspectives and, and places that we've never seen before. So yeah, you get a really talented writer and director who can just look at this whole entire universe that's been created and say like, go have fun. Like give us something that's going to be incredible. Like I I've said for a long time, I'd love to see the West wing in space. For example, I'd love to see a political thriller. I, you know, some galaxy spanning event movie or something like that. I think there's the possibilities to use a overused cliche are endless. Yeah, my concern about a new crew is, will the general audience go for it? You know, because to us, as big Star Trek fans, we think of the universe, where in general, I think the public, you know, most of the general public thinks of Star Trek is, oh, that's that show, that's that stuff with Kirk and Spock or Picard, you know. So, yeah, there's got to be something that they can identify and it doesn't even have to be the crew, but maybe I don't want to see another movie necessarily with the Borg, but something that they recognize that says, oh, that's that's Star Trek. And maybe it's Klingons or something. But Noah did say, and this is a quote from him, we're not doing Kirk and we're not doing Picard. It's a start from scratch that then allows us to do what we did with Fargo, where for the first three hours you go, oh, it really has nothing to do with the movie. And then you find the money. So you reward the audience with a thing that they love. And I like that idea that there's some connection that even though we may not know this crew or may not relate to what's going on, there's something that's going to connect it to canon. There's going to be something that goes, oh, now this makes sense. It has to be able to make sense to the people who have no idea what Star Trek is. Right. That's like the perfect Star Trek movie, in my opinion, would have all the essence of Star Trek that the fans love, but could totally be an introductory port for people who have no idea what star trek is yeah that that to me like for example i look at star trek first contact i feel like that was just a perfect movie that you know if you're a deep star trek fan and you know who zephram cochran is and all of this stuff like it's it really hits all those notes but at the same time for the general audience it brings them along and brings them into it there's there's a favorite part that I just love at the beginning. And it's when they're first chasing the Borg sphere into the time vortex and data says, and they step it down a level for like, we, we got to bring the audience and let them know what's going on. Data says there are chronometric particles emanating for the Borg from the Borg sphere. All the huge star Trek fans are like chronometric particles. Oh my gosh. Time tra- travel. Then Picard says, they're creating a temporal vortex. That's gotten like another 30% of the people. They're like, oh, okay. And then Riker stands up and looks at the screen and goes, time travel. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. Like, they're just like, okay, now everyone's on board. You know, yeah. the perfect writing. <laughs> Thank you, Riker, for telling us what really is going on right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm excited about a new film, but again, I don't get excited about any of this news. I don't know, and it doesn't seem like we'll probably ever see this anyway. It's not sounding too good because it does sound like Viacom CBS are just reevaluating everything and trying to figure out what they're going to do with this franchise from a theatrical standpoint. So, again, 
it none of this exists to me until they say the word action on a set. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. I feel like, okay, now we're really getting a movie. But it's worth, you know, exploring and, and seeing what they're at least thinking about and playing with. But, you know, Quentin Tarantino, I'm still hoping that happens, but not expecting that either. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't I, seem likely. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> you, you don't like that idea, Katie? There'd be too many feet. I think they would mm. focus too much on alien feet. <laughs> <laughs> For a certain segment of the audience, they'd be really into that. But uh, the rest True. of us, maybe not. <laughs> the Tarantino crew would just come on over and be like, yeah, 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 we see what you're doing. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Um, yeah, we need more feet in Star Trek. Do aliens wear shoes? If they have special appendages, do they have special footwear? This could be a whole new realm of Star Trek. Not mm. Dax, not the Dax Trill, but Dax, mm. the officer on Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered Country. They yeah. we did see his feet. But then there we've go. got Saru with his feet, and he does have special mm. boots. So, you know, it's a case by case, I think. <laughs> we could do a Star Trek movie about shoes. There you go. It'd be boring, but it could happen. <laughs> I wonder if a podcast has spent any time talking about shoes in Star Trek before. Yeah. That- well, now you guys have a new episode. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'm writing it as a topic. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by Nike. Yeah, yes. there we go. <laughs> Well, that being said, uh, because I really don't know how to transition from shoes to this next topic, but (laughs) CBS All Access, uh, they're rebranding themselves. And this isn't a big surprise to me because we talked about this on another show, because in some other countries where CBS has an online OTT type service, uh, they've rebranded it Paramount Plus. And it has now been confirmed that CBS All Access will be rebranded to Paramount Plus, which I think is very interesting because in my mind, when I think Star Trek, I would always think of Paramount as Mm -hmm. being the studio of Star Trek. But then when the company split years ago, I had to get in my mind that, oh, all the series now are under CBS, not Paramount anymore. And when we, I would get the novels in the inside jacket cover in you know the first couple pages there would be a paramount logo but now there's a cbs logo so then i had to get in my mind okay well only the movies are paramount everything else star trek is cbs but now when we get a new episode or series or s- season of something it's going to be on paramount so now i'm back to thinking about paramount again even though the production's probably done by cbs it's all confusing it's like a slushy <laughs> mix yes. yeah no, this is uh yeah, I know we we've talked about this, but it it makes sense, you know, Paramount is the name that's been around for, you know, I don't don't know how many years now, almost 100. Uh and and you know, it has that cachet, it has that name, it has that respectability that I I don't feel like CBS has as much. Uh, so, you know, it makes more sense to tie Star Trek to that. And also to kind of go back to what we were talking about with the, with the film franchise as well, with the online service being Paramount Plus now and so many studios releasing films in a streaming environment, maybe alongside a theatrical release, maybe this is a new arena for the next Star Trek movie could be this platform. You know, we have Disney Plus having released their live action Mulan on Disney plus over there. And, and so maybe that maybe the next star Trek movie will be streaming into our homes on Paramount plus instead of going to the theater. I thought about that. That could be an interesting, interesting use of switching over to Paramount plus is because when people think CBS, they don't think movies or mm-hmm. movie releases. You add in the Paramount name, all of a sudden you can have TV and movies. And with the way the world's going, I think that we're going to definitely see more streaming movies. So they could technically use that little Star Trek treat as a little incentive for people to start using it. Yeah. You know, when CBS All Access started off, the idea behind it was to pay extra money to get more CBS content, to have CBS available. It shows its primetime lineup, its late night talk shows, its um, soap operas, game shows, whatever on on on-demand basis. So you pay a little more money to get that, plus some original content, for example, like the new Star Trek series. So it was just an extension 
of the CBS Broadcast Network. But now they have moved that beyond CBS into other countries where CBS isn't available. And they've also now, because of the merger with Viacom CBS, have brought in the other properties from you know, MTV and VH1 and Comedy Central and Nickelodeon into the fold of the service, plus their Paramount library. So it's, it is more than just CBS. It is CBS plus other things. But to Dan's point, outside of the United States, CBS is not as well known as a brand as Paramount. And Paramount, connected to movies, makes more sense. So instead of this being CBS plus, Paramount plus makes so much more sense. So I think we're going to continue to see this service with more movies and content and yeah, possibly theatrical releases or soon after it's in the theater, it shows up first on this service. So I think they're also making an international play with this service. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice catchy name. Paramount plus just rolls off the tongue so much better than CBS all access. I never liked that name. (laughs) Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. No. And and from what I'm hearing, it sounds like, like to your point about the international stuff as well, it sounds like going forward, uh, like Strange New Worlds will be available on Paramount Plus worldwide as opposed to, uh, you know, a Netflix or Amazon deal. And Discovery, I've heard maybe in future seasons will be over there as well and no longer on Netflix. I'm not sure about that one, but I have heard definitely they're looking at Strange New Worlds to be on this platform as opposed to, uh, you know, all all the various myriad platforms that we've had had these shows on like Netflix and, and Amazon at this point. Yeah, if I were Netflix, I'd be a little worried because mm-hmm. so many of the so much of the content that has been on Netflix as these studios are building their own streaming services, they're like, well, why are we giving it to you? We should keep it or we should put it on our platforms. And so Netflix has done a good job of keeping originals going, but you know, more and more people don't want to play with Netflix. They want to play in their own sandboxes. So exactly. And with some of the recent mm, shows that have been causing interesting reactions online i think companies are definitely starting to think let's just keep our properties in house yeah there's a financial benefit to that too because now you're not sharing revenue with someone else it's all coming to you so absolutely yeah greed that's what we call it yes greed. (laughs) (laughs) just run by a bunch of ferengis (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's true. You know, that's so funny you said that because I just watched Little Green Men from Star Trek Deep Space yes. Nine recently. Great and I've episode. Seen it. I know. I love it. I've seen it Amazing. many times. I didn't realize my wife had never seen that episode before. And oh, she was wow. watching it with me. And she was just like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And I was <laughs> like, you've never seen this before, have you? Because she's dabbled in Star Trek over time, you know, before we met. But she wasn't a regular tune in viewer. And we met in 97, so that episode had already aired prior to that. But ever since we started dating, got married, she's watched every new episode of Star Trek with me. But there's past episodes that she hasn't seen all of. So I love it when somebody sees Star Trek, something that they haven't seen before. You know, something You said 97. I was one year old at that point. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That makes me feel really weird right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, think about me. I'm late to this game. So every like I'm getting my friends to watch Star Trek for the first time. And like you said, like getting that joy from watching people enjoy it. That's totally that's one of my missions in life is to make sure people in my young generation have seen it all. Excellent. Well, you're doing good work. That's awesome. The the more Star <laughs> Trek fans we can make, the better. <laughs> I'm slowly working away at my friends. <laughs> yeah, there's more than just Harry Potter out there, people. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if your friends get into Star Trek, they will want to turn into the virtual New York Comic Con that's coming up because we have more virtual panels. And again, you know, this isn't even something I was sure that I wasn't sure if I really wanted to talk about this, but I just want to let people know that we are getting more virtual panels because it seems like we're getting (laughs) virtual panels like every few weeks. That's Mm -hmm. Star Trek. Not complaining about it, but um, so I've never been to New York Comic Con. And I'll tell you one reason why. It's always on the weekend of my birthday. Always. Mm. That'd be a reason to go, wouldn't it? 
Well, yeah, but see, the problem is that my family wants to spend time with, you know, and I want to spend time with my family. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's like, you know, my wife and my daughters, it's like, oh, what do you know, let's do something nice this weekend for your birthday. And I want I don't don't want to say no. I'm going to New York Comic Con. <laughs> the thing they need need to do nice for your birthday is to buy you a ticket and send you to New York. I mean, there you, you were go. just dancing around the issue here. <laughs> yeah, well, and we've talked, there's been talk before about, well, we would all go to New York, but they don't necessarily, you know, want to spend the whole weekend at Comic Con, or at least my wife wouldn't want really want to do. I don't know. I'm it's just saying, your birthday. Drag them I know. <laughs> have to do I'm whatever just saying, you want to do. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, you know, I put family first. That's all I'm saying, you know, because I know it's important to them. And plus then my parents who are local, they want to see me on that week. So I'm always like, I'm not going to go. So now here we've got virtually. So now I could do it. But guess what? They pick, pick the weekend after my birthday this time. Like, this would be the time I could actually go. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, that's awful. (laughs) So the panels, it looks like here, and I'm looking at um, an article here on treknews.net. There's a plug for you guys there. And uh, there's a Lower Decks panel and a Discovery panel. And it looks like they're on Thursday, October 8th, which is not a weekend, but it's leading into the weekend. But it starts at noon Eastern, and uh, it will be on the... New York Comic Con YouTube channel. So I hope then after they do it live, I can watch it later because I'll be working. So I hope they keep it up because, yeah, work days, um, people aren't going to take days off to go to a virtual convention, I feel like. They'll have it streaming in the corner while they type away at their desk. Mm -hmm. So we have, yeah, various cast members from Lower Decks and Discovery. So are you guys going to tune in and watch these? I mean, maybe not live. Katie, like you're just saying. Well, you might. Well, for me, I can. Yeah, yeah, because you're done work by that time. Yep, 10 a.m. I'm done. It's great. <laughs> but yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably tune in. I love having like background sound on, or just like I'll turn on an episode of Mash just to listen, listen to it. And I'll definitely do that with the convention. I don't think I'll dedicate time though to just sit down like I would if I was there and pay my full attention to it. Just, eh, you know, something in the background. If I get a nice little tidbit or fun little behind the scenes fact. I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely planning on checking this out. I'm uh I'm I'm still uh not working at the moment, so uh I will definitely be checking these out for sure. So uh yeah, these have been fun. I'm I'm wondering if there if there're going to be any kind of surprises at all. I'm not sure. There there wasn't really anything at the San Diego Comic-Con. The Star Trek Day stuff, we got, you know, a couple new trailers and some really cool stuff. This one, I don't know. It, they do mention there are some surprise guests and other surprises as well. So I don't know what they have planned, but uh, yeah, not sure. Well, the timing of this is coming right towards the end of the season of Lower Decks and also right backing up there at the start of season three of Discovery. So it's possible that maybe in Lower Decks, they might show us a scene from the last episode. Maybe that's a little surprise. And Discovery, I mean, we've already gotten a new trailer. I don't think they'll release a new trailer just weeks before the new season starts. But maybe, again, they'll show us a scene from the uh, first episode of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. I mean, those episodes should be edited by then. (laughs) You'd hope. (laughs) I would hope. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe like a sneak peek of a scene. As far as special guests go, I'm really hoping Grudge the Cat makes an appearance. I, I want to yes. see David Ajala's book's cat here. Yeah. Yeah, because he will be on the panel. So yeah, I mean, that's that's possible. <laughs> there you go. And I love animals in Star Trek, and I think this would be the perfect opportunity for it. That <laughs> Perfect. Oh, <laughs> that was wow. awful. That was low-hanging fruit right there. <laughs> Purr, yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty much that's all been in the news this past week since our recording on a Saturday morning on the 19th of September. So if something's come out since, we'll cover it on the next episode. But Katie, I'm just curious, what what have you done lately that's Star Trekky? Have you bought anything recently or done anything interesting? I have been looking at posters and I have found that we need more posters of Star Trek that are readily available online. Cause usually I, re- I rely on going to con- conventions cause you get original artist posters and all of the artist gallery and everything 
all in one spot. So if you're like me and you're decorating a new apartment and have a bunch of empty walls uh, and you want to fill them up, you can just go around and find all these cool vintage posters, new posters, reprints and all that. And I just feel like I'm struggling hardcore now trying to find these posters. So if anyone <laughs> has any recommendations, I would love to hear them. But I'm, I'm currently in the search for Star Trek stuff to adorn my walls. Very cool. Yeah. I should get a bat left. Ooh. Totally it. it has a dual purpose because it's decorative and fun to see, but also home invaders, you walk up to them with a bat left, you scare them out of their <laughs> minds. No one's ever coming to your house ever again. Yeah, especially if you yell cling on something at them, you know. Yeah. Oh, just, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, local comic shop does have a batleth for sale it's like the full size replica but it is i it, it's like that high quality foam stuff though oh. like like what the the prop ones they so used on the nice show were like bluff if you're using it as a weapon <laughs> yeah but it's like the exact same size perfect dimensions like official cbs licensed product it's pretty cool i've been tempted but i haven't bought it I see how now I'm going to have to go and look those up too. <laughs> well, you have the high vaulted ceiling. Yes. There, So you have plenty of walls. Do you think you can put stuff all the way up the wall towards the ceiling? I probably could. And I don't even have to stop at the ceiling. I could probably get a bunch of starship models and hang them from the ceiling, add some little mini lights. So it looks like constellations. And yeah, I could, I could totally make this a <laughs> geek cave. So now, okay. Now let me ask you something here. Okay, so you're a single woman. I don't know what your dating life is like at all, but <laughs> it's about as existence as uh, you know what. There's no, there's no nothing to compare it to. There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there's a void I'm, I'm in space. <laughs> I, I, yes, exactly. I'm in a very complicated relationship with tornadoes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. Well, if you met someone and you brought mm -hmm. that person over. I mean, they would have to accept all this. So, oh, hardcore. Do, do you think you would actually go out with someone that you would not feel comfortable bringing to your apartment because that person oh, yeah. wouldn't like it? Oh, I, I am the kind of person where I'm like, you know what? Eh, screw it. We're just going to do it. And just like, see, you know what? What do you think? I don't, do you like it? Not like it? Just go for it. <laughs> It'd be a good <laughs> test, you know. Exactly. See it's how like, they react. You know what? If this were to go on into other stages, eventually marriage, this is what you would deal with. I would have a weather wall. I would have Star Trek ships. I would have Doctor Who in that corner, Orville in that corner, Pop Funko wall. Like you have to accept that this would definitely be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you like a wall in the basement somewhere, but you know, all my stuff, it's, it's all. I will take the entire basement. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dan, I mean, your situation, was your place all decorated when you met your future wife? Pretty much. Um, my The basement is pretty Star trek out. And I mean, I've got a lot of stuff around in the living room upstairs, too. And uh, Nikki's been very patient with all of it. And she's very <laughs> accepting. She's, she's a big Star Wars fan, though. So, you know, she's got her little Akbars everywhere. Uh, Admiral Akbar is her absolute favorite character. And she's known for collecting various Akbars. So, you know, we both I have our things. I love that so much. <laughs> I imagine it's like you, you just find them like hidden in cupboards or hiding underneath <laughs> the sofa. Like that would be a fun game. Like where's Akbar today? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I was just thinking of this because when you were talking about posters, when I was in my single days, I did not decorate my apartment because I thought if I brought girls over, it might freak some of them out. But there was <laughs> one thing that I did have on my wall because I loved it and I have it somewhere rolled up. My favorite poster was, it was from the 25th anniversary of Star Trek before you were born, Katie. <clears throat> uh, yes. <laughs> it was the helmet of an astronaut on the moon with the reflection of the Enterprise <gasps> in the glass of the helmet. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I want that. that. I loved I that. that poster. I loved it. And I was well, like, I have to, it looks so great. And so when I did bring girls over and they'd say like, what's this? This it's, Oh, it's Star Trek. I'm like, yeah, I just thought the poster looked really cool. I Aww. know it's got Star Trek. <laughs> See, you know, you could have been downplaying it to a massive Trekkie. So you never know. Just oh no, I knew the girls I went out with were not Trekkies. I can tell you that. No, <laughs> well, no. Then you have the opportunity to convert them to Trekkies. Oh, that's true. Yes, but when I met my wife on our first date, 
Uh, she asked me what I was into, and I did say one of the things I was into was Star Trek. And then she said, oh, I was babysitting the other night. I had Voyager on, and she asked me about what happened because she didn't get to see the end of the episode. I'm like, we're done. Ooh, I got yeah. my knee right there, and I asked her to marry. No, it wasn't that cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, and yeah. where I'm sitting right now, I've got a signed picture of Quark over my shoulder. So, you know, you have <laughs> to deal with this stuff that. if you get to know me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that's one of the fun things, too, is you never have to worry about starting a conversation when you put up your fandoms on your wall. Like you, people can walk up, up and be like, oh, I've seen that show, or oh, I vaguely know about this. Tell me more about this. Totally perfect. You'll never run out of things to talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Katie, if anybody's listening that is interested in going out with you, where can they find you? <laughs> 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 oh, well, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. I have a channel that I've started up. It's slow going, but you know what? We're getting it a couple of shows out there. And of course, you can find all my fandom forecasts out there as well. It's so many fandoms or the logo in the little bubble says SMF. And you can follow me there on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm at weather underscore Katie. No idea how I didn't how I got that name. I thought it would have been taken, but eh, I'll take it. And you can follow me on my storm chasing adventures as well. Well, tell you what, we will put a link to your social media, but also your YouTube channel in the show notes of this episode. So, you know, people out there, if you want to check out the channel, go subscribe. The link is right there. It's really easy for you. Uh, yeah, it's you've got some really cool stuff up there, including, and we talked a little bit about this before we started recording, your Survivor audition video. So there's yes. some really fun stuff there. There's so much fun stuff. It, it, it pretty much, that Survivor Audition video is an introduction to who I am. So if you have no idea who I am or don't even watch the weather or are interested in it at all, watch that video and I think you'll figure out very quickly if you enjoy my stuff or not. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, are you going to put a link to your YouTube channel in there too? I don't usually do that, but, uh, you know, it, it's pretty easy to remember. Just uh, youtube.com slash Kurtratz Productions. Uh, but yeah, I could put a link to that if, if people want, I guess, uh, you can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Kurtrats, K-E-R-T-R-A-T-S. You can find the show at Positively Trek on Twitter and, uh, go check out our Facebook discussion group for Positively Trek as well. We definitely want some more people in there talking. Uh, we have some really great people in there now, really great conversations and posts and that sort of thing. It's always a lot of fun. I love your guys' uh, community page. Oh, awesome. I, I've made I, one of my great friends that I met through a convention, Patrick Carlin. He, yeah, he, he loves it too. <laughs> we need more people <laughs> like him. Just show him all the positively Trek stuff. Absolutely. There you go, Patrick. Special call out to you. Shout out to Patrick. <laughs> He's my meme supplier. He sends me Star Trek memes at least three times a day, and it's I love it. Nice. I live for it. <laughs> it just shows that the community your guys' show has quality people absolutely i i've said this from very early days great people listening to our podcast so that's really cool that's, that's why we don't want to get too popular that's the there thing <laughs> i just ran into this with my youtube channel where uh like my my subscriptions have kind of been hovering around a, per, a particular level and i'm like i kind of want more subscriptions but at the same time like the comments on my videos are generally really good and I don't know if I want to stick my head up really high and, and attract the, you know, people that leave really crappy comments, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't, you don't know. Want to stick I your really neck out and then feelings. get chopped off. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I stay on the show, it's not going to get popular. So you're safe. Aww. So we're, we're good. <laughs> Fishing for compliments, Bruce. That's right. Tisk, mm. tisk. <laughs> yeah. You're awesome. Everyone loves you. Oh, yada, yada, yada. You. <laughs> Thank you. Did I tell you I was in Variety last week? Anyway, that's a whole nother story. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I got promoted at my job, so and it was in Variety. So I was like geeking out <laughs> over that. I was like, I made Variety. It's like, I don't know. Is that saying that the publication's going downhill? Because I mean, this isn't a <laughs> You're big You're moving deal. up in the world. <laughs> I watched Singing in the Rain for the first time. I've seen scenes and stuff, but I never watched the whole movie, and Variety was in there. And I was like, I've been in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. 
<laughs> well, you guys can find me when I'm not in Variety. You can find me on Twitter at Admiral underscore Rex, or you can find me on the Star Wars Report. Occasionally, I was on last week's episode talking about the season two trailer of The Mandalorian. So thank you, Katie, for joining us. Thanks and, for having uh, me. We'd love to have you back again someday. Definitely. Anytime. And you can always, like I say, if you need a forecast, let me know. <laughs> We know where to find you. We will let yeah. you know. We'll also contact you if we need you to control the weather for us. I'm working on that, so we'll see if it's about a 50 50 shot, but I'll do my best. <laughs> cool. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week. And so live long and prosper and stay positive.